Joining us now for more is Dan Wiskin, CTV science and technology expert. Good to see you, Dan. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I want to begin with what we were just listening to there, the, the fact that this mission will be quite complicated, that it is difficult. Let's talk about the fact that it is pretty difficult for people to go and see the Titanic. Let's talk about the factors involved. Yeah, I mean, the, the big factor is pressure. If it's so far down, the pressure is so high, you need a very specialized submersible to be able to go down that far. And so, I mean, the analogy is the opposite, space. Because if something goes wrong in space, you can't just, you know, go up there in an airplane to fix things. You need a spacecraft to get to space. And likewise, when something goes wrong at these kinds of depths, you can't just bring a normal ship and float over what's happening and lower some thing. Um, you need specialized equipment to get to those kinds of depths. And so this is a, a very specialized submersible. And to give you a sense of what the people aboard uh, signed up for, uh, this is an eight hour journey to visit the Titanic. So they go from, they, they travel from Newfoundland. It's about 600 kilometers out into the middle of the ocean to the place where the Titanic went down. Uh, from there, they board this submersible. They're sealed inside, obviously. Uh, it takes two and a half hours to reach depth. It's going down about 3.8 kilometers, so almost four kilometers underwater. Incredible pressure mm -hmm. down there. Once they're there, they get to have a look at the Titanic, spend uh, roughly three hours exploring and, and seeing uh, the, the famous sites uh, and, and just getting a sense of the history of that place. And then it's two and a half hours to get back to the surface. So a total of five hours on that journey. And it's unclear where in that timeline things went wrong. It's unclear what the nature of the, the severed communication is. Uh, it's unclear uh, you know, when they were expected back to the surface. There aren't a lot of details that have emerged at this time. So there's a lot of speculation about whether there's something catastrophic has happened or if it's just a communications failure, whether they are still on course to, to complete the mission as they signed up for it, or whether something has changed. And, and so uh, we're going to be finding out lots in the coming hours. But right now, it's, it's nail-biting stuff. Yeah, because Dan, also, you would imagine that there's a limited amount of oxygen in the submarine as well. How long do you typically think these types of vehicles or a submarine submersibles allow people to stay underwater? Yeah, the numbers that I'm seeing communicated uh, from different sources, uh, I haven't been able to verify, but they're saying something on the order of 96 hours of oxygen. Mm. And so uh, I'm also seeing unverified uh, co comments online that this was a, a trip that might have started on Sunday, yesterday, as opposed to starting today. Uh, so it's unclear where in that 96 hour timeline things are, but this is all speculation. We don't we don't have a lot of hard facts on this. And one of the challenges is, you know, people want to rush in and ask a million questions. But right now, as much bandwidth as possible is being allocated to this the search and rescue. And so people are holding off on trying to contact that ship. People are holding off on trying to ask lots of questions because right now. It's really all about recovering and trying to get people safely back to the surface before uh, people start trying to figure out what exactly went wrong. Yeah, and it's been more than 100 years since the disaster happened, since the Titanic went down. Uh, talk to us a little bit more about this continued interest that the public has in the Titanic. You know, it's it's really interesting. The The Titanic went down in 1912. Uh, it was supposed to be the unsinkable ship. And, and the reason they said that is because it had these separate compartments filled with air. So the thinking was that if, if an iceberg hit the ship uh, or any other kind of sort of catastrophic damage happened to it, it could only hurt one of the sections. And so it would still be able to stay afloat because the water leaking into one section wouldn't affect the others. And so it would stay afloat. Of course, that, that didn't turn out to be the case. The, the nature of the iceberg collision was such that it tore through several of these chambers. Uh, and then the, the, uh, the ship went down and uh, more than 1,500 people died. Uh, it's, it's certainly one of the most infamous tragedies uh, in Western history. Um, but, but, you know, it's, it's something that people are very curious about. Of course, James Cameron made a famous movie in 1997 about it. Uh, there have been these submersibles that have gone to see the ship. But what, what really makes this place persist, this, this shipwreck in the middle of the Atlantic, is the popular fascination with it. From a scientific perspective, it's not as interesting as other shipwrecks. And it's unlikely that public funding into scientific research is going to get allocated to this ship very much more uh, because we know a lot about it and there are other ships with bigger mysteries. Um, but that human fascination is the reason that people are willing to pay what's being reported as, as $250,000 a ticket wow. for the opportunity to go visit this ship. And so that's what we're seeing here is commercial 
industries that are taking tourists to go see that ship. And, and that's the nature of what this submersible was doing was it was tourists going to check out, check out the Titanic. And so uh, that is the nature of exploration of the Titanic at this stage. And, and, and that's where we got to. Okay, CTV's science and technology expert, Dan Riskin. Thanks as always, Dan.